first thing we'll do is to go into a web browser and I want you to type in scribblemaps.com and that's going to come to this website here. Then all we need to do is to go to create your map now and it will come up and ask if we want to do a pro version but we just want to keep it nice and simple. We're going to remove that so all we have to do is a nice free version with no logins and no payments whatsoever. What you can see is a beautiful satellite image of a location that might be anywhere in the world and we can zoom and pan to your school or we can use this search bar right up here to type in the name of your school as well. Now as an example I'm going to go into Smithfield here and I can click on Smithfield Queensland and that's going to take me to my local area. So you see it just pops up here and I can move around until I see James Cook University, which is what I'm going to say is my school for the purpose of this exercise. Now I have a mouse that I have a scroller bar on as well. So I can scroll in to zoom in a little closer or you can use the zoom tools in the upper right area here. Now I find a lot of the labels just a little bit too congested. So what I like to do is to turn those off. So down the bottom right hand side, all you need to do is to click on the satellite view and that way we get rid of all the extra notation up there. Now all you need to do is to get yourself a piece of paper and you're going to sketch a map of your local school. And so for me, this might be James Cook University. So I want you to look at the screen of your computer and draw what that looks like, paying particular attention to the areas of tree, because that's where our shade is, compared to the total boundary of your school as a whole. Here's what my finished map looks like. I've used different colors to show my trees, buildings, and ground. And also remember that all good maps have a title, a north arrow, a legend, a scale bar, and also information about you as the author, where the data came from, and the date you created it. I also included a little map of Australia up the top there, so you know exactly where my map is located. Once you've done that, you might need an adult to help you calculate the area covered by the trees. Here, I've used some plastic wrap, but you could also use tracing paper, and I'm drawing a grid over the top of it. Now you want to make sure that each grid cell is the same size. Then you colour in all the squares that are covered by trees and the little half squares as well and add them up to whole squares and you can write that number down the bottom. Then you do the same for the areas that are not trees so you know the total area. And overall your percentage will be the total area covered by trees divided by the total area of your map. I found 46% tree coverage. How much shade does your school have?